Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Plasma, and today we're going to talk about Skulk sensors, and I'm going to show you five machines you can do with them. So the first thing is I've got a floating button here that you need to understand how the range nature of Skulk sensors works. So, if I push this button, that opens up. Crazy. It's really not attached to anything. Before we get into the specifics of how I do this, because it's actually a little bit complicated, um, let's talk about something simpler, which is the Skulk sensor itself and how it works. So the Skulk sensor is going to be able to detect within an eight block radius. So all of this magenta is going to be blocks that it can detect. Outside of this, it will be fine. It will not be able to detect anything outside of these. So right here, we've got a little setup, and this is a preview for what we're gonna be doing at the end of the video, so stick around. I've got a trap here, and so what you can do is once you understand that you can count to eight, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's the furthest it can go, you can use that to have a radius within a hallway that it will be able to detect, and you can use that to set traps in a hallway. So you can use it as a remote sensor for if a player is in a specific location. As long as they're not anywhere else in this circle, it's only going to go off when they walk down this hallway. And so if I walk down this hallway, as soon as I step into this pink zone, it's going to set off the redstone signal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook it up. Okay, we didn't want it going off early. There we go. So what we're going to do is as soon as I walk into this, it's going to fall because I just had, everything was riding on a torch. I had a torch right here and this was on top. And so now, whenever it detects, it'll fall. So you can make somebody fall into lava, you can do anything like that. So this is how it works. And this, what you need to bear in mind is that it's going to have that eight block radius and you can actually plan around it pretty reliably. So now let's go take a look at this machine I've got here. So right here, I've got within an eight block radius, I've got some buttons and so they could just be floating like this as long as I didn't just make a sound, it should work. So let me show you how to build one of these. This is a analog calculator. What it will do is it will only trigger if an exact value is being produced. And so what I'm testing for is the value of 11, which happens when buttons are pushed. And so in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to find out if it's exactly 11. And what I do is I take a book and I place a book with 15 pages on it. I put something on each page, and this will allow us to control the redstone output of a comparator, like so. So if I take some redstone dust, because of my custom resource back, you can see I've got um, six right here. So we can go seven, eight, nine, ten, and we want it to be exactly ten. And the reason we want it to be exactly ten is because a button will make a, a signal strength of eleven. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set a comparator right here to subtraction mode, um, it's on subtraction mode when the front torch is on, and there's power to the comparator if the back is on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do that, and that will give us the ability to detect. And if there's more, if it's a signal strength that's more, it will cause it to produce too much of a signal. And if it's less, it won't produce anything. So if I place a block, it's going to be a signal strength. I think it's um, 13 or 14. It's a bigger number. And so maybe it's 12. But it'll make both of these light up. If it's And so if both of those light up, if it's more than what we're looking for, we're going to cause it to push into this one that's also set to subtraction. And it will not be able to output. And so the, that gives us the ability so that it will only output if it's exactly the number we want. And so for the case for 11... It's going to be the button, and so we have this set to 10 to subtract. And so now, if I take a button, I come over here in range, and I put it down. That's the block placing sound. See, now it's not working. And there you go. So right here, you can see a very simple contraption. And I mean very simple. Um, I'm actually going to pull it out. I'm going to show you how simple it is. It's literally just a piston. And you can actually set up it with a one tick delay such that it actually hears the piston that it sets off. So now it will do that forever. And this example here is that you can actually use it for a clock. You could use this for a redstone clock. So that's, a, that's machine number three. To be totally honest, this is probably what I would use them for. So machine number four is the ability to remote redstone. And so you can actually have an alarm 
long distance that travels based on when the sound is detected. So you could put these underground so that nothing else triggers them, but you could make it so that you have an alarm a long distance away. They're not instantaneous, but they don't have to be. But you could put them down out of the way and underground and through solid objects, and it gives you an easy way to run redstone a long distance without having to dig things out. You don't need to dig and connect things, and so you can just run them straight through solid objects if you needed to. So the final grand finale right here is this right here. I think I'm going to put it in the thumbnail. I did this with a skulk sensor, and how might you ask? Well, I'm sure you've heard of a TNT minecart trap. What's well, very simple, by doing this, you can power the minecart and cause it to go kablooey. Now, the reason why this one isn't blowing up is because this block is glass, but if this were a solid block, when that gets powered, it would be pushed off over here. So over here, I've got a massive explosion for our grand finale, and if I go to spectator, I will show you what it looks like. I've got a skulk sensor, and I've got it powering through this wall, each of these, and there are four TNT minecarts here. And so if you were to step onto this region, there would be a massive explosion. And so let's do it. Nobody lives forever, right? Man, that's a pretty good sized hole. I'm Dr. Plasma. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And we will do more content like this if you're interested in it. I think they have a lot of potential for redstone builds, and I really think there's a lot to untap. I think that's going to be great for very simple uses. They're just going to be hard to acquire, but I think it's totally going to be worth it. I'm really ready to, my, to go through some ancient cities to get as many of these as I can, or make a farm for them. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.